Hello and welcome to Shark Jets. I'm Skid Vitz. In this video, I'm going to quickly show you how to get up and running using the UI part of the RIF so that you can uh, click on different objects as a UI object so they can handle like pointer events and so you can make menus and screens and things to that effect using the RIF. But before we get into that, please make sure to hit the like and subscribe button so that uh, YouTube keeps telling people that I exist. So please hit the like button at the very least. Thank you so much. Without further ado, let's get to it. All right, so here we are in Unity and I've got VRIF installed. I've got a plane for us to stand on and just a plain old cube sitting there that we're gonna interact with here in a second. So uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is bring in the uh, XR rig. So I will search for that. That's not how you type XR. There we go. And then I will bring that into the plane and I will reposition that just because I like to have it above the ground. All right, so we are good to go there. Uh, I think I'll move the rig back just for giggles. All right. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is add a canvas. So we'll go to right click here and go to UI and canvas. And once we add that, we'll notice it adds this event system for us. And we're gonna make a quick change to this event system. We wanna turn off this standalone input module. So we'll just deactivate that. And then we will add our VR uh, UI system. And what this does is it lets you determine which hand is gonna interact with the UI stuff. Uh, which button we're, we're gonna press, things like that. So if you wanna select the left hand instead of the right hand, you can do that there. If you wanna change the button that you press to trigger something, you do that here. Um, and then uh, we wanna turn on uh, or change a couple things here. We wanna add the physics raycaster. Um, and if you hover over this, it tells you this. If it's true, the component will be added to the camera so that you can interact with things. So we'll go ahead and just check that. And then we wanna mark which layers we're actually gonna be interacting with. And by default, it's set to none. So um, in our case, we'll set it to default, but if you create a different layer for things that you wanna interact with, you would pick that. So I'll set it to default and UI so that we can also use uh, any UI objects as well. So that's all we'll need to do with the event system. So now we'll go back to the canvas and the canvas by default is set to screen space, screen space overlay. And we wanna change that to world space so we can actually see it in the game world. And then it's gonna ask us to pick the camera and we can just pick the center eye anchor from VRIF. And um, we'll need to also add the VR canvas to this. So if we go to add component and search VR, you should see VR canvas, just add that. There's nothing to set on it. Um, and then now we can actually go ahead and take this ginormous canvas and just resize it into something that fits our world a little better. Uh, so I'm just gonna scale it down to 0 .005, 0 0.005, and then just kind of center it in the world here. So there we go, we've got this little uh, canvas sitting here. It's a little too big, so I'm just gonna make it 200 by 200. And then uh, let's see, I'll just move it down and to the right a little bit. And now I'm going to add an image just to give this a background. So I'll go to UI image, and then I'll just change this color to black. Um, set the width to be the same as the canvas for us here. Um, and then I will also add a button just so we have something to mess with so i'll add this button there that's good to go um, and then um, on the box we need to do a couple things because i'm going to make it so that we can actually click on the box so on the cube so i'm going to click on the cube here and we just need to add a uh, pointer events ob uh, object to this component so if we look up pointer you'll see pointer events and now this lets uh, the cube receive uh, UI events. 
So as you can see, we've got a distance, how close do you need to be to the thing to actually receive the events, whether or not you want to enable it or not. Um, and then all the different events that it'll listen for. So it'll listen for a pointer click, a pointer enter, so you can change the color like on enter exit, um, pointer down and pointer up. So we will um, be using this to determine what we're gonna do with it. So in this case, I'm just gonna go to the pointer click and then I'm just gonna drag the cube itself into this and select game object set active and leave that unchecked. What set active does basically is it toggles the uh, enabled or disabled for this object. So if I check that, then that means it's gonna set it enabled. And if I uncheck it, then it's gonna disable this object whenever I click on it. So in theory, when I squeeze the trigger, the cube should disappear. Um, and then with the button, you know, the button system has the same events uh, so if you scroll down here, you have the on click so you can actually do something when you click on uh, this, this event. So let me just add another cube here to disable. And uh, let's bring this over to zero, zero, zero. All right, where's my second cube? There it is. Okay. So I will move this one to the left. Okay, and so what I'm gonna do is when we push the button, we'll disable the second cube. So I'll go back to the button, drag the second cube into this, go back to game object, set active, set that to false. And so now what should happen is if I click, if I point to this cube here and squeeze the trigger, it should disappear. And if I point to the button and squeeze the trigger, this left one should disappear. So I'm actually gonna move this, oops, that's not what I'll do. I'll move the canvas to where that other box is so that I can be closer to it when it disappears. And uh, let's maybe rotate it just to skosh. All right, looks good. All right, let's test this out and see what happens. All right, so here we are. And as you can see, um, if I point towards this cue here, nothing happens. But if I point towards this one, you can see there's that pointer, uh, that ray being shot towards the cube to let you know that it's treating it as an interactable UI object. So again, nothing there. But if I click, uh, if I point to this, you can see the same laser. And just like that, it's probably make that cube a different color. But now if I squeeze the trigger, that cube should disappear. And there it goes. All right, and you can see the line goes away because the cube's not there anymore. And the same thing over here, if I come over here and click anywhere on this, nothing happens. But if I click the button, that cube disappears as well. And that's how you deal with uh, UI components using VRIF. And there you have it, quick and easy as usual. If you found this video helpful, please make sure to hit that like button and the subscribe button and tune in for more stuff. Let me know in the comments if there's anything you'd like to learn. And if I can do it, I will teach it. Um, before we go, I have a Discord where I uh, hang out with some of my viewers. So if you wanna join that, please go ahead and do that. But one of my Discord members uh, has been hard at work making a bunch of games and I'm gonna showcase one of his games, one that's available right now in the App Lab store. So if you wanna check it out, the link is in the description as well. Uh, but let's go ahead and take a quick look at that. Okay, so here we are looking at John Ray Logo. All right. Now, this is my first time playing this, so uh, let's see how this goes. Shoot here for the tutorial. Oh, there's guns. Okay. All right. Can I let go of the guns? Yes, I can. Okay. Don't do that. All right. So uh, shoot for the tutorial. Let's do that. Shoot the Debris with a laser of the same color. Oh, nice. Okay. That's going to be tricky. Uh, pull trigger to fire. Great. The left gun must be held in your left hand, the right in your right. That makes sense. 
and shoot to close. I'm batting. Shoot to start. Okay. Red. Green. That's yellow. That's green. Ah! Ah. Okay. I lost. Well, very cool. Uh, personally, I would change the way you switch the colors. They could be toggles since they're just two colors per gun. You can literally just press the A button or whichever one button, primary button, to toggle between the two instead of moving your thumbs unnecessarily. Um, but I can see the challenge in this, keeping track of the colors in your hand. Oh, that's yellow. No, oh, see, that was a toggle. I would have gotten it. This is uh, very well done. I like it. It looks good. The music's nice and relaxing. Very well. Very well done. Good job. The link to this is in the description if you want to pick it up on the App Lab market. And there you go. That was pretty impressive. Um, for a first game I've seen from somebody on the Discord, it's great. If you are making something and you want me to check it out, put it on one of these shows, episodes, let me know, join the Discord, show me what you got. Um, and if your app is available on the App Lab store, I'll be more than happy to talk about it and show it and uh, all that jazz. Thanks again for watching. I'm still Skidvis. Peace out.